come from Venice. Mall coming up over there. Okay. Let the black fly in. I think they see all of us. No, but you can say it once you're in the sale. I'll come out with you. So, hello everybody. Here we are. I'm so nervous once again. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I just told the stories to, uh, no, first of all, we have a premiere for the first time ever. We are all on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for inviting me back, Nadine. Many people wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? No, um, um, I just uh, told the story when I'm nervous, uh, spe especially doing this, I went into the liquor store this morning at eight o'clock in preparation for tonight. And the way uh, the woman who took the cash looked at me, it's like looking on the, at the watch and in my face, that was kind of, kind of hilarious. So, wow, many people are watching. Um, first of all, a big, big thank you to each and everyone who's making the effort, watching, taking your time doing this. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. It's it's awesome. Even if it's not uh, your kind of music yet, but uh, we really, really appreciate that. Also a big shout out and thank you to Rachel from Rachel's Goals for her tremendous support and everything. So I, I can't thank her enough. Yeah, Rachel's really been promoting uh, your live stream. So that's really good, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's awesome. I really can't thank her enough. That's that's really, really great. Uh, the liquor stores in Germany are sold out now, Mazzy. Yeah, <laughs> they usually are not just because of me. <laughs> All right. Um, so how do we start? We start uh, like I think the last time you might have missed that also, John, I tell you. Um, I'm um, telling you, John. I know this is <laughs> been here I, for a long time. The, the thing is, Eve, I fully deserve it, so don't worry about it. You just keep throwing them over here. It's fine. <laughs> I know that you can take it. Yeah. All right. So uh, we start with three records uh, we recommended to you, and um, you know how we how we feel about it. And um, last time I started, so but I think maybe this time. If you would like to start. Well, all right. Um, yeah, I know we talked about, you know, uh, recommending three albums, but <laughs> I kind of <laughs> went in the idea of uh, recommending three artists. Artists, okay. in my opinion, are, you know, sometimes you have artists that you don't understand how come they're not bigger. How come, you know, they don't have that, exposure that they that they deserve because they, they are just amazing their music are just is just amazing so yeah so i've decided you know to showcase um albums by three artists that i think that everybody 
who is into soul and R&B music, but who is into music in general should check out. So the first one is, uh, she's a soul singer, American soul singer, songwriter. She's from New York. Uh, she's been doing her thing for quite a while, but I really um, became familiar with her music like maybe two years ago uh, when the pandemic started, and that is Kendra Morris. This is her latest album that was released early, uh, earlier this year called Nine, Nine Lives. It is just an amazing, amazing album. She's really, um, she has that 60s, 70s, uh, Tax Motown sound, but yeah, beautiful production of vocals is are amazing, and yeah, this one is beautiful. I mean, uh, there's not a bad track on this one, in my opinion. Um, yeah, you have the title track Nine, Nine Lives that is beautiful. This life is just it's probably my favorite track on the album. This life, uh, who we are is beautiful as well. Oh yeah, just a very nice body of work from start to finish. So this is a recent album. What label is it on? Sorry, Eve. What label is it on? It's it's on Karma Chief, which is I believe a sub label of uh, Coleman Records. Okay, if right. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And it's that classic soul sound, is it? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, okay. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. Like yeah, this one is very good from start to finish and this is her latest one and she has released uh two other albums this is her debut titled banshee very very nice and i purchased that on her official uh website and she you know autographed it for me which is very cool wow. yeah mm -hmm. and it is like a gatefold yeah she's a singer songwriter very very talented uh yeah so I don't know if you can see. Yeah, Banshee, yeah. It's, uh, all of her work is very, very good. I, I, I really enjoy, really enjoy your music. And she also uh, released an album like a few years ago. This one is from 2013 and it's called uh, Mockingbird, which is an album of covers her favorite uh, 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 songs that she covered, uh, mainly um, classic rock. So uh, yeah, you have another, yeah, this is another gatefold here. Another gatefold. Uh, let me remove this so you can see the full gatefold. And she has a particular style, like a 70s uh, look, 60s, 70s look that I really uh, like as well. Yeah, she's very cool, and um, yeah. So you have um, you have uh, covers, uh, "Space Oddity," uh, "Welcome By," "Shine On," "Crazy Diamond," uh, "Karma Police," "Cry Me a River," "Black Hole Sun." Yeah, she she covers a whole bunch of songs, and yeah, her, her vocals are just amazing. So Kendra really? Morris, yeah, re I really really recommend this artist here. She, she Would you like to play us a song? Yes, uh, let's play a song from a recent album. Let's play, um, let me see. Let's play Who We Are. Yeah. All right. The official video from uh, Who We Are, which is a great song. Yeah. You know, Ra Rachel gave me a, a little tutorial of uh, how to do this. <laughs> cool. <laughs> because this is less exciting. I like this. Yeah, <laughs> because the last time I really, uh, you know, I yeah. Have you guys ever heard of uh, Kendra Morris? No, never heard of her. No, but it I sounds didn't. it certainly sounds like my sort of thing. If it's that classic soul sound, definitely yeah, so. Yeah, she's, very good. She's very very talented. Very talented. All right, so let's see. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. Yeah, I really like that. That's really cool. Yeah. Great voice. You know, uh, uh, the other track, uh, the other tracks are more up tempo, but really, her vocals are just yeah, beautiful. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No, and cool. there was a question of uh, if the record is available at Goodwill or charity shops. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we never know. We never know. Hey. Oh, I, I don't think maybe so. sometime, <laughs> <laughs> but I highly doubt it. Yeah. Really All right, know. Eve. Once again, a big winner. What's the next one? Oh, you okay? The next one is well, she's another very talented uh, soul R and B singer from uh, Virginia. Um, she was, I mean, she's been in the business for quite some time she, since the nineties and, you know, uh, people had highly expectations when it comes to, uh, you know, her career and whatnot. She was seen as the next, 
uh, Aaliyah, and Aaliyah was pretty huge in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she was actually the first artist signed on um, on uh, uh, Missy Elliott's, the rapper Missy Elliott's uh, label. And yeah, she released a debut, uh, which was, you know, not as good as people would have thought, even though uh, the single, you know, Making Hot was very, very uh, nice. Uh, then she had some problems with the labels because Missy was, you know, starting to sign uh, many other artists and did not have time uh, enough time to, you know, uh, develop um, uh, uh, this artist in particular. So she had some problems. Then she tried to release a second album that was, you know, shelved and was never uh, released, unfortunately. But yeah, she's very talented. And um, this artist is uh, Lady Ray. This is her latest album that was released, uh, I believe, earlier this year or in 2021. It's called Peace of Me. And this is uh, from the um, uh, Big Crown Records. Like, um, she sold more. Uh, she has that, you know, retro sound as well. Um, she's now more sold than when, when she was, when uh, earlier in her career, she was a little bit more urban, a little bit more R&B, but now she's more soul, beautiful voice. And this album is just very, very nice. Uh, the title track is amazing. I mean, look at the cover art. The cover yes, art. the cover art. Yeah, I really love the cover art. And it's on a colored vinyl. You know how much I, I like colored vinyls. Colored vinyl. And That's wow. cool. Look at that. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. Very nice. And uh, yes, great production as well. Uh, Leon Michaels, uh, which is a big name in the Big, big Crown Records, uh, uh, produced that album very very well produced uh yeah you have some beautiful track on this one so yeah like i said i mean she started her career in a, in the early 90s didn't quite work worked out like, like she like she would have wanted but then in 2013 she um she formed a duo with another r&b artist from the uk um named terry walker i don't, I don't know if you're familiar with her job yeah. Yeah, Terry Walker and that's this is the lady album. Lady. I love that yeah. record. That's a brilliant that's a, record. Yeah. Yes, that's a beautiful record here. Fantastic. That was released in 2000, 2013. Great stuff. Unfortunately, they only released this this record here because Terry Walker wanted to focus on her solo career, which is yeah. pretty uh pretty sad because I love this one here. I would have yeah, loved I agree. I, I think I think that um I, I think that it. album is much better than anything else that Terry Walker has done. Yeah. Uh, you see, I, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with Terry Walker's uh, 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 work as a solo artist, but yeah. with Lady, it was like wonderful, man. This album is so good. I mean, the the track Money, uh, Get Ready, Karma, uh, Please Don't Do It Again. Well, it's just a, a, a great, great, great album. Unfortunately, we only have one record from the duo Lady. Yeah, yeah it's interesting then, actually because that, that album got quite a lot of airplay. Over here yeah. in the UK at the time, it, the, the, I can't remember what the lead single was, but um, it got a it got a lot of airplay on the, on the radio. Yeah. Here, so it's really well promoted. Yeah, I think the lead sing the, the lead uh, the lead single was Money, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay, I think it was Money. Great, 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 great album here. So after is that, that, is it yes. expensive? Is it, do I need to uh, uh, cut my arm off to get it, or is it? <laughs> No, it's not expensive at all. I mean, you can find it on online on Amazon pretty easily. Well, I bought this one in uh, maybe three years ago. So honestly, I'm not sure if it's still available, but I, I, I think so. It must be. Now it's 500 bucks, I'm sure. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> not. Well, back in, the, in like two, three years ago, it was like $25. But now, hey, with the now price it's 250. Now, with the well, prices little, now, I don't know. I don't it know. It will be a little cheaper if it's a DSD file, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is a, 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 a other album titled A Queen Alone that was also mm -hmm. released on uh, Big Crown Records, this one. Great album. This one is beautiful as well. Uh, yeah, not a bad track on this one. Not a bad track on this one. 
uh, let me see. Um, yeah, cut me loose, bad girl. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do it again, do it again. It's a beautiful song. So yeah. So cool. uh, Lady Ray, she goes by her real name is Nicole Ray, but she goes by uh, 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 she goes by the name of Lady Ray. Great artist, great, great, great artist. Yeah. Very good. What so, what song would you recommend from her? I, uh, I'm not so eager to hear something from her. We could play uh, the track "Do It Again." Yeah. We play "Do It Again." Yeah, from from this album here. Okay, I try to do it again and make it right to uh, <laughs> share <laughs> to share this whole thing. But um, so let's see. I I get that. I'm I'm getting I'm getting such a professional on this. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm not getting. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting just you know. I'm impressed, Nadine. I'm impressed. <laughs>
I, I could listen to that all day. That's fantastic. I love that. Fantastic, that horn right? sound all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah. I mean, has the first that you played was good, but that was yeah. yeah that was Still awesome. has that 60s, 70s sound yeah. as well. Yeah, really out. cool. Yeah. I love that. She's very, very good. She's very good. All right. So uh, awesome. That record you had with that colored vinyl, is that also still available uh, or is that difficult to get? Yes, this one is still available. I bought it on uh, Bitcoin Records uh, official website, you know, the label. But this one, I think it's uh, available everywhere online mm -hmm. or if you ever you go to your record store, they could you know, order it as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just a beautiful, yeah. Very wow, nice. she can sing. She can sing. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what I, I've been saying. I don't understand how these, you know, talented artists are not, you know, bigger. How come they are not bigger? I just, I just don't, I don't understand it. But hey, I mean, there are a lot of, you know, super talented artists who, you know, really deserved way more um, exposure, way more exposure, indeed. Yeah. So uh, the last artist I'm going to be uh, talking about, this one is a male um, soul singer, but his style is kind of different because he calls, he calls his, style of, his style of music slop and soul because he mixes like psych, uh, rock in it, blues, jazz, R&B, a bit of hip hop. Another great guy. I mean, he's a guitar player. He's from uh, he's from Atlanta. Guitar player, singer, songwriter. Uh, he was, you know, a member of a uh, garage rock band called A Night Sun. I don't know much about that band, but uh, I've heard a couple of tracks that are very, very good as well. And he released an album in 2022 that is amazing. His third album. And it is Curtis Harding. This is his album from 2022 uh, called If If Words Were Flowers. Another beautiful album on colored vinyl. It is a gatefold. Yeah. I love, I just love his work. He is so talented, great vocalist, beautiful lyricist. And uh, yeah, this one is but this one is probably my favorite. I I I really liked his uh, second album uh, titled "Face Your Fear." This one was released in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you're familiar with this one, guys, but this is a great one as well. If you want to get into Curtis Harding, I I probably recommend you to start with this one. But uh, yeah, his uh, his latest one is very good. It has it has more of uh, jazz, a lot of jazz influences on, on this one. But uh, yeah, still very very nice. You have some gospel, you have some jazz, you have some you know classic soul in this album. It's just superb, very 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 nice. Yeah, Curtis Harding, Curtis talented, Harding. talented brother. He has worked with. A lot of you know great musician. He was a backup singer for for, uh, for the um, R uh, B hip hop artist Silo Green. He has worked with uh, the producer Danger Mouse. I mean, he's a he's a talented brother. <laughs> he's uh -huh. very very talented. Curtis Harding. So yeah, and this this one is his debut titled Soul Power. Another very very oh, good. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. All right. Very, he has very, very 70s cover art. Yes, so yes, That's yes. Cool. He has a yeah, 70s style. Yes, you, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, yeah. He's very cool. Very cool. I love his music. Uh, for this one, we could uh, play. Um, my God, there are so many good tracks on this one. Uh, <laughs> That's I'll the sound go, of a good album, though, Eve. You know, if you, yeah, can't, pick, yeah, yeah. if you can't pick a tune, then that's the sound of a good record. Yeah. I'll go with uh, hopeful, hopeful. All right, hopeful, hopeful. John, you are one of the few men I yeah. ever have known use some kind of thing to put your glass on if you're <laughs> having it on the table. One of the few men I've ever known in my can, life. Can you hear <laughs> it every time I put my glass down? All the time, that's making a tremendous <laughs> amount of noise with this. I'm so proud of you. Maybe, maybe, yes. you know, he was probably he was probably well trained 
I was, yeah, I'm so, yeah. John, I'm so my, my wife sat there, you know, she's my, my, my life wouldn't be worth living, you know. I'm so delighted. All right, so let's play Hopeful. Yeah, Hopeful is a nice track because I think he, he wrote that track du during the um, during the, the pandemic and the uh, whole Black Lives Matter movement. And it's kind of, it's a beautiful message, a, a very nice uh, track, yeah. All right, so let's hold on for a second. I'm getting good at this. I decided that I'm getting good at this. Hold did, on. did you guys know uh, Curtis Harding? Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's getting quite a bit of, um, again, he's getting quite a lot of airplay at the moment. Yeah. Possibly over the last 12 months or so with his yeah. latest record. So, but I haven't heard any of his albums. So, yeah. So, let's see. I think we have a problem with the with the stream. The stream, yeah. It's 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 looked like it's gone down. All yeah. right. Uh, All right. Okay. So what we're gonna do now? That's interesting. Let's see. Stream unavailable. Oh. Suspended for ah, you know what? Because we are playing um, um yeah. no. okay. Yeah, take, okay. yeah, take the song down and it, you'll uh, you'll be back in a couple of minutes, I think, for what they're saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Why are they doing this? The last time was no problem. I think we played too much new stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's that might it. be it, yeah. We will be back. Do we make a new stream? No, I think you just, uh, I think you'll be back, will you? What does Google say? Mm. Uh, stream, okay. Interrupted. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, uh, warning address issues. Mm. Temporary interrupted. The stream mm. can open. Restore stream access. If you live stream shop, check in your dashboard for strikes. If you fix, okay, let's see. Let's see. Ah, uh, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, we will fix it. Everything works well. We will work everything out. Um, my stream. But as you can see, I have no message, nothing at all. Mm. No problems here. Okay. So let's see. We are back. I think we are back. Are we back? Yeah, we're back now. That's good. Oh, yeah. Slow. We're, we're back. back. We're back. All right. Yeah, you two monster goddess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you two so monster awesome. goddess. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. holy. That was something we went in. You can see uh, Eve is having such a great taste that YouTube <laughs> is not allowing to enjoy the taste. Eve, you're yeah. certainly the person to go to for recommendations for Modern Soul, without a doubt. Really? Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All three of those tracks were fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. And I don't own Thank any you. of those records. So, and I, I, I will do I'm tomorrow. Glad. Definitely. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> cool. I'm glad. Very cool. All right, so you're still with us. Is everybody still with us? Some of us with us. Okay, all right. I'm sorry for the uh, for the interruption. Blame it on YouTube, not on us. Hmm. Um, so what we are going to do now is, if, first of all, thank you very much for the great um, for the great recommendations. What are your I'm well favorite done. records from each artist? What would you recommend? Uh, favorite records from each artist. Um... I think when it comes to Kendra Morris, her, her, her latest one, you no, know, you can you should go with, with the latest one and then you know uh, just discover her previous albums. Nine Lives is is amazing, great, great, great album. It was released. What it, it was released in twenty twenty two, so you you wouldn't have any problem, you know, picking it up. It's a great album. So Nine Nine, nine Lives for Kendra, then for um. Lady Ray, uh, hmm, Lady Ray, you can, uh, my God, all of her albums are, are pretty good, but Queen, Queen Alone, I really love Queen Alone, but if, you can also go with her, with her latest one, piece I of, I love this cover art, I yeah, love this cover very good as well, a little bit more retro, yeah, piece of, piece of me <laughs> is, is very, very nice. And if you like it, you can check out a previous one, like a, with a duo with a Terry Walker, uh, the duo called Lady, self-titled, uh, self yeah, very, very good, this one as well. And for Curtis Arden, like I said, uh, this one, the latest one, is <coughs> but uh, I would recommend you to check out his you know, sophomore album, Face Your Fear. This one is very, very nice. Yeah, so you can start with this one here. Face your fear. All right. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you. Like that. My pleasure. Excellent. My pleasure. Really cool. Star Trekker, thanks for the super sticker. Thank you very much. All right. All right. All right. All right. That was now very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank Pretty God I have so much whiskey inside, so I'm kept calm. <laughs> whiskey is good, Nadine. That's good. Yes. It makes a live stream of, even better. I like of, it. Of course. <laughs> uh, of course. Um, 
All right. So the 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 best for the last. So John, you will be the last one. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Ladies first, John. Ladies first. Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah. I totally As we agree all that. already figured out, he's very well trained. <laughs> you know, he's. I am absolutely. <laughs> Um, I've just had a little snippet of, I think, a record you're going to show you had on, on your needle drop uh, this week, which uh, I can only recommend to you. And um, Cool, right, good, good, good. Let's see what you got then, uh, Nadine. What, what have you got for us? I got for you, and this is a little, uh, indeed, a little uh, personal uh, uh, thing. Uh, it's Ron Matlock. I, I made myself big. I've learned that it's better so you can uh, all see the record. This is Ron Matlock. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he made only one record in 1979, mm -hmm. and I found this record on uh, in a record fair for for 10, 10 euro, and um, I bought this because I liked the uh, the cover so much, mm -hmm. honestly, I because it that. reminded me a little bit of the um, the spy who loved me, who uh, where the evil was living in that water castle. So and I thought, oh, that's such a cool cover. So I I needed to have it. And I listened to it and it blew me away. Mm. And um, I always wanted to know why Ron Matlock only did one album. Um, and uh, we, we are trying, we, we, are, we are trying to have a little snippet at least um, that you can hear it. And um, so I wanted to get in touch with him because you can see uh, I was fortunate enough that he signed it. Mm. And um, so I wanted to know more about him and why only one album. So, but I somehow, you know, it's, it's pre. <coughs> Uh, I don't know, Facebook or all this so a long time ago and um, no chance of getting in touch with him. So, but I found out that the backing vocals were done by Brandy and oh. Brandy, Brandy was one of the um, most successful, most requested backing group of the 70s. They did Disco Lady with uh, Johnny Taylor, they did James Brown, they did everything. And um, I got in touch with them, with all three of them, and I had a phone conversation with Pam Vincent, who is up here. And um, I asked her about her story and everything. It's, it's awesome. Their, their backing story is also awesome. And uh, we discussed uh, the recording session with Ron Matlock. And she said, Ronnie is something very unique. We got into the recording studio. We had no idea what was going on. And there was this guy in the corner very shy, uh, very shy doing his thing. So we got in the recording booth. We were um, ready to do our backing vocals. And we thought, OK, what's going to be? And how is this guy going to sound? But anyway, it's, we're going to do it. And they were like, OK, we, we've heard him over our headphones. And we were blown away. And um, so when I heard that record again, I tried to get into that situation. And it was really, um, really good. So the, 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 so, and, and I got in touch with Pam and I said, is there a chance I can talk to him to hear his story? I always want to know the story. The, why did it not happen? What happened? And um, she said, yeah, I can get the two of you in touch, but he's sick. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it might not work out. And I said, no problem. And uh, we've exchanged some, some messages, Ron Matlock and me, and I asked him if he would like to share his story. And he said he's not in condition to do that, but he would love to sign my record. Okay. So I sent him the record. And um, between sending the record, his son died. Oh. And so um, I didn't ask him for it. So uh, it was OK for me. Um, and he passed away. And two days later, I got in the mail the signed record from him. Mm. Wow. And uh, yeah, that's somehow a little uh, emotional for him because he was, he was so talented. He did write some stuff for Motown, but uh, like you said in the beginning, if uh, somehow it doesn't work out. Yeah. yeah. And that's so that's so sad. But um, I want to play. I want to play some music. I want to play some music for him, and we will see if we can play at least a snippet YouTube. That would be so nice of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had that album, Nadine. I mean, certainly, my, my copy isn't signed like yours, which it looks fantastic. I'm incredibly jealous. That's wonderful. But I do have the album, and it is, as you say, it's a brilliant record. Brilliant late 70s soul disco. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So it's a 70s soul disco. Yeah, yeah. 
Really, really, um, really. And the thing is about it is that every song is good. You know, so many disco yeah. records with cherry pick songs, but that mm -hmm. that album is good from start to finish. It's a it's a great record. Really good. Okay. Yeah. Good it's, choice. It's, yeah. So uh, thank you. Uh, so let's see if we at least a snippet YouTube a snippet would be great. So let's hear it. We try like a minute. Mm. Okay, we don't want to get suspended again. Great vocals. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Vocals. Very nice. This is just... yeah, you went for one of the slow jams on that. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Yeah. That's, I think that that album is mostly known about that track. Um, I can't forget about you, but um, I also love Backstreet, the more up tempo thing. Yeah, that's cool. I'll make you a little more jealous again. He, he signed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still jealous. Yeah, really. And jealous. I also want to point out that Brandy, I make myself big to make you even more jealous that Brandy, who also did the backing, also signed this. Look at that. I mean, that is, I mean, that just there, just keep holding that up, Nadine. I could look at that all day. It's just a beautiful <laughs> record. Look at it. Yeah. Mm. It's fantastic. It's signed by everybody. I love mm. it. <laughs> okay, so now to make you even more jealous, if that's possible, I have an original 1979 test pressing of that record. I, I don't know what I'm doing here, actually. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> you see my gnarly records in a minute. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Mm. I understand this. I'm totally with you. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so, so Nadine, what, how did you get hold of that test pressing? Was it a, an auction or was it a shop or how did you get hold of that? I even got it for free. Wow. Oh, blimey. Fantastic. Wow. Music sounds better when it's free. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Ask the artist. Um, yeah. um, and no, I, I actually got that from um, from from Discogs. Right. And uh, I, you know, I got in touch with that uh, with, with the seller of it, and he said, you know what, take it for free because um, it has one scratch, which well, um, it has it's a pretty much beaten up test pressing, but it has um, one scratch. I make myself big. Yeah. So can you see that? You can see yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it still plays. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I thought it's not going to play. So, so this is a real test pressing so that you can see what a test pressing looks yeah, like. Yeah, I like that. Look at that. Yeah. Yes, some artists sell test pressings, which are not test pressings. So um, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's that's awesome. So I, I really I adore I adore this album. Brilliant. So, so do you use Discogs much, Nadine? Is, is that how you get many of your records through Discogs? Um, early on, I did when the pricing wasn't crazy because that's good that you asked that. I found this record uh, when I was in the largest, um, they, they changed location. It's now Herzogen something in the Netherlands. It's the biggest, largest yeah. record fair in Europe. Mm -hmm. And they had a French version of that record for 
15 euro. I already had a version, so I didn't buy it. So I was checking Discogs just a few days ago, and the French version of that record is 150 euro. Ooh, that's crazy. So I thought, yeah. So, um, and sometimes you get that record for 40 euro. And the strange thing, I find it in, in every, back in those days, it was difficult, more difficult to find, I think. But now I, I, I feel like I see it in every second, third record booth when I'm on fairs for mm -hmm. 10, 15 euro. Mm -hmm. So um, that pretty much changed buying record at the Discogs. I even had to date a case that I'm always writing people before I buy a record, please send me pictures. Mm. Yeah. And um, that's mm. very good because uh, near mint is uh, a different uh, uh, thing for, for many people. <laughs> uh, I may uh, find it up here uh, very fast or otherwise I'll find it later on. I so have Eve, to... Eve, do you mainly buy do you mainly buy new records? Obviously no. your, your taste is, is more up, up you know up to date. Is is uh, is it do you mainly buy new records or, or are you still out there looking for classics i do buy a lot of new records i do right. i do because like you said i'm mainly uh uh my preference are are mod modern r&b and soul music yeah so contemporary r&b and soul music but um yeah i do i do buy use used records as well because yeah when it comes to 90s r&b uh um it's it's way more difficult to yeah to, mm. to get so that's why uh, I I look at discogs as well, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, nineties vinyl, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what did you just pull off the shelf there, Nadine? Sal sold me near mint. Okay. Wait, I'll make myself big. Oh, come on. Oh, imagination! So, now we're talking. A bit of like this. Near mint. Near mint. Near mint. Near mint. Uh, you don't need to look at the record. That's new mint. So um, wow, that, that's why I'm always trying to, you know, send me pictures, and um, sometimes it's just sending uh, not the whole label, yeah. not the whole records, just some corners, and you get the record, and you have a huge cutout or every anything. So I think that's one of the biggest issues with with discogs, the out of control prices. I understand it's an open market and everything, but uh, and also. Um, uh, the, the pressing situation, when I want an original copy of a record and I pay the price of an original copy and, and so I'm, I'm checking it at home and see in the death wax, it's not the original copy, it's some, some other thing. I'm, that's, you know, that's, these two things are my biggest uh, issues, the, the, the thing how to grade something and also the version. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, at the moment I'm trying to... Um, um, maybe you know the guy spitting the truth uh, about records. He's having yeah. a new channel. Bobby, he's uh, a very kind person. So I asked him if he had a chance to check out for, for some records for me to go into the store. Um, sometimes eBay. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time I'm trying to get into the stores. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nadine, if ever, you, if ever you're after UK presses such as that, I mean, that, that's something yeah. that we see quite regularly over here. So just let me, yeah. let me know. Send me a list and find them or we'll send them over to you yeah that would be that would be great but that's my my, my biggest issue with uh buying records uh online yeah absolutely mm. yeah no I, I don't buy records online very often i did during also when we had the, the pandemic and lockdown and actually one of the records on the show today i i picked up during that sort of period just just purely because obviously the stores weren't open but most of the time i'm out looking for records that's the fun of it isn't it yeah. speaking to people yeah. about records and yeah. You know, getting on your hands and knees and looking through dusty boxes of yeah. records. It doesn't get any better than that. It's brilliant. Yeah, but I was in the in the Netherlands a couple of weeks ago and I was like crawling on the floor, getting through bins who weren't touched in decades. And there was like nothing. All the prices were incredibly high for yeah. totally, uh, you know, there was one record, uh, Martha and the Vandals, Black Magic, which is quite common. And Reds yeah. had eaten the corners of that for 15 euros and i was like what the hell is going on up here you know and and the, the person the seller and the record store said i'm gonna sell this stuff anyway and i said okay yeah yeah it's uh like, i guess it's a world worldwide problem now i it is yeah absolutely is. absolutely i mean you go to your local record store you go through the the bins and you know stuff that you used to see 
in dollar bins like maybe three or four years ago or like now 15 yeah. 20 bucks yeah regular pressings you know yeah <laughs> yeah depressing is depressing it is <laughs> it is it is but yeah it's depressing yeah right so, so have, have you got another one there nadine have you i have another, another one two. to show two more to show cool more to show. okay uh, one thing, once again, talking about artists who didn't get the recognition they should have. I'm constantly getting emails from, from YouTube telling me uh, that my stream is uh, law protected and I shouldn't play music on it. But um, anyway, we'll do it. <laughs> so sometimes you have to play against the rules. Um, so this is a fantastic record. It's yeah. Sandra White, Rounded Woman. And this was originally recorded in 1974. Mm -hmm. And um, David Johnson, who produced that record, um, paid for the whole uh, production and everything for himself. And then he had tape and went to Columbia Records, mm -hmm. to every major record label, and everybody wanted to release that album. So uh, in around end of 1973, he said, um, Stax Records got in touch with him and said, oh, we also want to do that. And he was like, oh, who's Columbia? Who's, who's Atlantic? I think Stax is great. So he gave Stax the, um, the tapes and Stax only released a single. Single wasn't success. And Stax at that time filed bankruptcy. Uh, so... You can imagine how frustrating that might have been. And the material on this album is so good. And um, that uh, rec uh, the songs which were uh, recorded by Sandra White were afterwards um, offered to others because the songwriter said, well, we also want to have some money. Mm -hmm. And so um, Aretha Franklin, which I think I had to look twice. <laughs> it's an interesting cover art. Um, <laughs> Aretha Franklin uh, recorded one of these songs mm. uh, from that record. And um, I would say we tried to listen uh, to that song Aretha Franklin covered. Um, and I must say, I'm a huge fan of Aretha Franklin. She's the queen, but Sandra White is killing it. Mm. So I would say, let's try it. Let's try it. I hope you're gonna enjoy it. I, I love I love this album. And um, also I want to point out this came out in 1988 or 1989. Yeah. This record. And uh, there, but there's reissue which came yeah. out uh, this year. And um, this pressing is now. <laughs> I bought it back a couple of years ago for 20 euro. It's mm -hmm. now around 100. But if you want to have the reissue, it's between I think around 30 euro. Okay. Yeah, it is reissued for Record Store Day a few years ago, probably three, three or four years ago, I think. I remember that's that's yeah. when I learned that's when I learned about the record. I didn't know about it prior to then. But yeah, yeah. I think it was reissued uh, a few years ago. But yeah, so so that's the eighty nine pressing, is it? Yeah, that's the original cool. or, original uh, yeah. press. So we will see, we will see how this turns out. Hold on. Hold on. All right. You say you love me and you want my soul. And I'm so sorry. Me. I, I don't got no name. 
just don't know. Lord, you don't know how much I cry. And now you want to come back. Knowing I'm still weak for him. You got any kind of heart. Please, please don't ask this of me. Because I'm not strong enough. All right, we don't want to get kicked again. So, yeah, that's that, lovely. That's lovely, yeah. deep soul. I love that. Yeah. Very nice. Perfect. And she also did a disco tune on it, Midnight. Um, it's such a shame that this, you know, and she was she was getting into a depression after the whole debacle of that album because uh, every major record label thought, this is a hit record. You have a hit record. Please let me release it. And out of circumstances and, you know, and, and years later, she recorded again because for years she didn't went into the recording studio. And um, years later, she, she got back into the studio, but she said herself the vibe was never the same again as it was on the recording session for this album. Unfortunately, she's already died. Oh. It's uh, uh, Terry Ke Keenan. Keenan, I hope I spelled that correct. Keenan, I hope I spelled yeah. Um, it was released in 1989 or 1988. I have a look. But it was recorded in 1974. Yeah. And the whole uh, story of it, um, 1975. And the whole story of it is also on the back and you get a better buy uh, i'll make myself big again i've learned from rachel um and uh, you also get extended liner notes if you buy the the reissue very nice yeah, yeah that is really nice yeah that's i love yeah, i'm, I'm playing the record to death really it's 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 tremendously good i, I wish i'd known about that record i, I remember it being released for record store day and I, but i didn't know the history of it and i yeah. so i'd never heard any of the tunes so i, so I passed you know passed on it but in hindsight now you know having you know investigated a little bit afterwards and you know heard, heard songs from it it's something i've certainly got to pick up i love that sort of deep soul sound yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very 70s yeah. yeah very cool that's that's just uh, tremendously good so my last record when I'm on road trips and I'm the driver, the driver can decide who's playing the music. <laughs> and it's always like, Nadine, could you please play something that I also or we also like, except all the the outdated stuff? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what can you know? So and then um, I decided to um, uh, to play a record and just not saying uh, not play a record. It was on Spotify because we we're in the car. To play something and um, everybody was oh that's a cool remix oh that's a cool st thing finally something new and what i was playing to them was um i make myself big again as you see this tremendously great cover art i was playing to them mascara see you in la right mm -hmm. so um this was um a german uh, american project the the um, instrumentals were recorded in munich in 1978 and the, uh, these tracks got sent to New Jersey and no other than um, at that point very unknown uh, singer who did a lot of backing stuff for Sister Sledge for many other people whose name was me some of you know him Luther Wendros mm. did the vocals on it uh, right I wish and I wish I, I wish I'd been on this stream with you last night because I saw that album today and I didn't really? pick it up. <laughs> so, no. There you go. Go on then. Go on, let's hear a tune. Go <laughs> back. I missed. Go go back and pick it up because <laughs> I got this um, around 20, 40 euro a couple of years ago. And do you know how much it is now? What's it doing now? Over 150. Oh wow. Blimey. Yeah, but uh, you know, you you get some. It's it's been released on on CD where they put a tremendously big hyper sticker around this woman up here, mm -hmm. um, where it says features the vocals of uh, Luther Vandross mm -hmm. and Claudia Hedwig. 
that was uh, that she's also singing on this. Mm. And um, that's a tremendously good record. It was never, even if it was uh, re partly recorded in the United States, it was never released in the United States. Mm -hmm. And when it was released back then, it was a total flop, total flop. Nobody really cared about it. And um, also, there is no mentioning of Luther Wendross or any of the backing singers and the producers. When Luther Wendross was having his uh, hit "Never Too Much" in 1981, kicked their asses because yeah. they didn't put his name on it. Mm. So um, I think we will be hearing a little snippet of it. Come on! I want YouTube to be challenging me. We will see what we can do about it. All right. So let's see what we can do up here. Le vol France Global à destination de Los Angeles. Vous voulez partager son prix et se rendre à la sortie du métro I wish I could have played the soul song, but we'll never know. That's very cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wish I picked. I wish I picked that up now. But yeah, yeah I mean, Luther Vandross, what a voice! What a voice! Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, amazing! I mean, that man could sing anything. Oh, yeah. I miss Luther. Yeah. I heard a story from one of the girls from from Sister Sledge, when he was in the recording studio with them, and he did backing vocals i think on we are family or some of their hits and um she, uh, one of the girls said he was always very sad um and uh, we knew why because he was listening his uh, playbacks in in the recording uh, studio and we were also thinking someone with this kind of voice yeah. is just singing backing vocals yeah. for such yeah. a long time yeah. yeah and that that was um mm. I don't know whether either of you are David Bowie fans, but um, but Bowie made an album in 1975 called Young Americans. Yeah, and yes, it's, 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 yeah it's a blue-eyed soul record. Yeah. You know, it's fantastic. So, yeah. But the, the the backing vocals are arranged by Luther Vandross. Yeah. Yep. Now, I don't you ever seen the 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 documentary Cracked Actor? It was made for uh, for, for for the BBC, and it's basically a, uh, about Bowie following around on that tour. And there's some incredible scenes of the backing singers obviously being led by Luther rehearsing before they go on stage and just singing their lines so that they don't have the, the lead vocal line to follow. They're just singing the, um, the, the, 
the, their backing lines, mm. but with all the rest and the, and the gaps in between. And it's incredible. Mm. It really is just mind blowing. But mm. on the album, um, Young Americans, Bowie does a song called Fascination. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Fascination is basically a rip off of a Luther Vandross song. So, so Luther, there was a band called Luther in 1974. And there's a song on there on that album, the, the Luther album called Funky Music. Mm -hmm. And David Bowie's band used to warm up with that song. Bowie heard it and basically reworked it with a different, mm -hmm. a different melody over the top. But he, he reworked it into Fascination, which is why it's, Luther Vandross has a writing credit on it. But um, yeah, that's my favourite Bowie album. It's my favourite period of Bowie. Yeah. But, it, but that link with Luther Vandross, it's, it's just lovely. You know, those backing vocals, those backing vocal arrangements, they're, they're really special. Yeah. Mm. But he had he had an amazing solo career as as well. I mean, he yeah, such a talented artist. It's yeah, yeah. I yeah, think it's, cool. a, it's a shame that he, uh, you know, he had. I think he had a stroke and he couldn't uh, sing anymore. And he was on some Grammy show way when they showed him when they showed footage of him that he said he said I'll be back soon and he died shortly yeah. after. Yeah. But I'm happy that he had the career he had. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, never uh, too much. A brilliant much. artist, brilliant, and yeah. perhaps one that's underappreciated. Perhaps deserves yeah. a little bit more attention. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, you know, obviously we we all make videos in in a vinyl community or, or whatever that is, but I don't very often see Luther Vandross record that's shows. True. So uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Right, very good. John. <laughs> oh right, okay, okay, my turn. Right, so we put yeah, the bar so, so high. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the struggle to, to to meet that bar now, I'm afraid. But okay, so I'm gonna start off with this record. So this is, I don't know whether you know, this, this is Donald Austin with an album called Crazy Legs. So this is a record that came out in 1973 on the Eastbound label, which is which is part of Westbound Records. Now, Donald Austin, don't know too much about him. He um I know that he recorded or or certainly provide some arrangements to the likes of Fuzzy Haskins, who was part of uh, uh, Funkadelic, um, Junie Morrison, who was part of the Ohio Players and worked with Funkadelic as well. So he worked with those guys in the early 70s. But he made this one album. Now, you can get hold of this. It's been reissued by Light in the Attic. But, uh, yeah, so this is a, this is an original copy. This is a, 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 a promo. I'm so but, um, jealous, John, and now I am jealous. I'm trying to get hold of this album for 15 years now. Wow. It's, I'm I mean, so it's, it's, jealous. It's a, it's a great record. It's Yeah. I mean, it's, not, it's not particularly long. It's only sort of um, 11 or 12 tracks, but it, and it's all instrumental. It's all guitar-led. It's almost mm. like that, I suppose, uh, a sort of almost like a psychedelic guitar soul record. It's quite laid back. It has that almost that high records sort of laid back groove to it. Great rhythm section, but just lovely me melody. It's funky. Every track is good. Um, yeah, obviously, if you can find an original, then, you know, great stuff. But, you know, it was reissued by Light in the Attic, so it's certainly worth seeking out that reissue. But, yeah, a lovely record. I picked this up only a few years ago. This was during lockdown. Now, I don't normally buy from Discogs, as I mentioned, but um, I, I did see this come up quite cheap from a, from a UK seller. So I did... Uh, picked that up at the time and i'm glad i did because as you say it's gone up in price but yeah a really nice record and uh yeah nice promo yeah i'm not changing my uh, ron matlock against that but um it is so let's try to hear some uh some snippets of uh of the music crazy legs i'm yeah so you, how much did you pay for it uh, I think I probably paid about fifty pounds for it. I think at the time, so that you know, and and to be fair, you know, for me that's a lot of money to spend on a record. Yeah. But it's um, you know that is a lot of money to spend on a record for me. I don't normally get into those sort of uh, those sort of numbers. But it, like yourself, Nadine, I've been after this record for the best part of twenty years. I saw somebody um, a record shop in San Francisco. Actually, I think it's. Groove Records, something like yeah. Groove Records. They, they just did a, there's like a, a video about the shop and the guy in the shop was basically talking about five or six records that he would recommend. And this mm. was one of the records that he pulled out. I'd never heard of it before. They played a clip of it and I thought, I've got to get hold of that. And obviously when I looked it up, it was, you know, it was going for decent money. So 
I never found a copy, but um, yeah, it came up at a, a price that I was I was happy with, as, and so I, I picked it up. But yeah, very nice. The, the reissue, if you can get all that light in the acid, I'm sure that will sound great as well. I think Mazzy found out the name. Groove Merchant. Groove Merchant, that's the one. Yeah, I've been there, Mazzy. Yeah, years ago. But <laughs> but yeah, that's what that's the, that's the shop that uh, that's the shop that showed the showed it on the video. I'm sure the video is still up on YouTube. I think he also showed the Sam D's album as well, which I think is perhaps where I first learned about that record, which is a great mid seventies soul record. So yeah, that video I perhaps learned quite a bit from that sort of ten minute YouTube video about that from that shop. But yeah, that's a good one. If you're gonna play a track, have you found any tracks, Nadine? Yeah, you, I found Crazy Legs, but if you have another, preference. yeah, the, the track, the track Hot Rooster, which is written by George Clinton and Eddie Hazel. Oh, you know, oh that so can you, be good. You, you can't go wrong with that. Obviously, it's part of the funkadelic, so cool. So you paid fifty. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it has a cut out. You know, when I'm trying to get, um, I'm always looking for the original. Pre for since I'm collecting, I'm always looking for the original pressings. Always. Okay. Uh, even if the sounds, I'm not an audiophile person, I have no idea about that, but um, the price is like, and it has a cut out, and I think it has a seam split, and it's 50, 50 pounds. It's insane. But it's a damn good record. So um, if, I would record. Have it, if I would have found it, I would have played it. So let's see if we can play something. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Sharing audio yes all right and let's play some <laughs> To mute yourself, It's all, it's all the same. Yeah. But it's, if, you, I love if you like, if you like that sort of early seventies funk, yeah. instrumental funk, you know, you can't go wrong with that. It's, mm -hmm. so it's a great record. Look out for the reissue. But yeah, very cool. I do hope that you will present us with the Lenny Kravitz record from the last Needle Drop. I hope it's in your selection. No, I haven't. No, but that's that's. Uh, you yeah, need to absolutely add it. Could... Add it. That if that record is just. It knocked me. I was like, "That's you know, that's just." I hope you need to present it. Yes. So I, uh, so I did a video a, a, a week or two ago, which was just like new funk records that I picked up, and one of them was a, a record by Edwin Birdsong called Supernatural. Mm. And, I, and I played a clip of it, and anybody that that's into that sort of. Um, you know, that, that sort of area where funk meets rock, which somebody like Lenny Kravitz yeah. does so well. Um, it's, it's, it's years ahead of its time. The, the album came out in 73. If you heard it, you would think it was, it was, it was from perhaps the late 80s, early 90s, in line with Lenny Kravitz stuff. Um, even the vocal sounds like Lenny Kravitz as well, but uh, it's a great record. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to hear that, that mixture of uh, funk and rock, a little bit of a heavier funk sound. It's cool. 
but yeah, but no, I haven't got that. I haven't got that with me today, Nadine. So sorry about that. Right, no, I'm so... trying to, to get the 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 link to your to your to that needle drop, and I can put it in the in the comments so uh, people okay. can I uh, can check that out. Maybe she has it going. Uh, on. Always the same. I love your intro. Maybe <laughs> see how's it going. Okay. Right. Okay. So my next choice. So yeah. I, I showed this this um, record in in my last video, which is a record by Madeline Bell, and I, I, I've been on a bit of a, a Madeline Bell kick recently. So she, she's an American singer. So, but she and I, I suppose I, I likened her to P. P. Arnold in the fact that she's um, she's an American artist that that found success in the UK. She came over here in the sixties. Um, and she made a, a, a couple of albums for Philips, Philips Records in the late 60s. Now, quite often in the VC, we talk about the quality of pressings. For me, Philips Records in the late 60s, original UK copies, if you can get versions of the first four, obviously Scott Walker albums, one through to four, or those late 60s Dusty Springfield records, mm -hmm. they sound fantastic. The pressings are, pressings are pretty much perfect. So, you know, that's the record that I was talking about in, uh, in my video. This came out in the early 70s. It's called Coming At You. Interestingly, produced by John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. So oh. I just found it fascinating. This came out in 73. That's the year that Led Zeppelin released Houses of the Holy. Um, so that same year, John Paul Jones was co-writing and producing an absolutely cracking early 70s um, soul record. Great record. Not expensive. I think I paid a tenner for that. But that sort of sent me down a, a path of listening to lots of lots of Madeline Bell. This again is from the early seventies. But the record that I've, I've really been listening to, this came out I think in seventy eight, seventy nine. It's called Doing Things. And first of all, look at that cover. Look at that cover art. Certainly one of my favourite, one of my favourite record covers ever. Mm -hmm. Everything about it just screams 1969. Yeah. You know, if it's just from yeah. the, the look on her face <laughs> to, to, that, to that dress, to the green background, it's an absolutely stunning album cover. But this isn't so funky. This is very much in line. So it's come out of Phillips Records. It's very similar to those Dusty Springfield records from that sort of period, almost that soul pop sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and it suits Madeline Bell's voice, you know. The arrangements are nice. This is a UK copy. Um, yeah, so this record, interestingly, none of these records have been have been reissued on vinyl at all. So if you, if you're mm -hmm. buying them, you're buying original '60s mm -hmm. pressings, right? So this album, I don't know, I, I don't know what I paid for this. I paid more for this than I did the other two. I say the other two, I think, were like ten or fifteen quid each. This one, probably thirty-five to forty pounds, I paid for it. Wow. Um, but, uh, but this one, was it a common record? I mean, it was it very often sold back in the day? I, I, I think it's just, a, I don't think it was a, a big seller of a record, no. Okay. But it's um, it's just, I suppose part of it is the fact there's never been another pressing of it. So it came out in, in the late 60s and has never come out again. So if you want a copy, or if you want a copy in decent condition, those are the sort of, the sort of figures you're paying for it. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's frustrating really, but... You know, it's, it's one of those records. It just looks incredible. And as I say, yeah. it sounds great. Phillips Records, mm. from, certainly UK pressings from the late 60s, I don't think you can go wrong. So, yeah, lovely stuff. If you're going to play a clip, as I say, they are pop songs rather than anything funky. If you're going to play a track from this, the opening track, Help Yourself, um, would be a good one to play. But it includes stuff like just stanzas of the, of the day, you know, Step Inside Love, which Scylla Black did, you know, which is, I think, written yeah. by Paul McCartney, wasn't it? Um, she does a nice version of that. But it's, you know, it's a nice record. It's not an essential record, but um, it's certainly a nice record. I never heard about her. She wasn't, was she, was she known a lot in the, in the US? Because I, I never heard about her. Yeah, yeah. so so she, she was known over here. She, she, she joined a band called Blue Mink, which you probably won't know anything about, but in the early 70s, they had two or three sort of top 10 singles in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, her, her her solo career never really took off to any great effect. But okay. um, the record, what I like about the records, they're all different. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm talking about this being a pop record, and it is a, it's a late 60s soul pop record, so very much like um, Dusty Springfield. Yeah. But then something like this, this has got a little bit more of a funk to it. You know, it's got a little bit more swagger. 
you know, and, uh, you know, I, I love the fact that he's the reason for that. It's John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. I mean, you'd never associate yeah. a member of Led Zeppelin as, as making a, a, a great early 70s soul record like this. But that's what it is. This is a brilliant record. Really good stuff. Yeah, she did. She sang on a Be Beggar's Banquet. She, I mean, she still sings now. And um, I know she's done back backing vocals to lots of Paul Weller um, in recent years as well. But any of these records, if you find her records from the late 60s, early 70s, pick them up. Get them a good price. Pick them up. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Mazzy knows. Yeah, Mazzy knows best. Mm. Love or Mazzy? <laughs> cool. Wow. Right. Someone having some questions about that. All right. Do you want another record or? Yeah, of course I want another record. I always want records. I have more <laughs> records. Right. Yeah. Okay. Watch the show. Um, right. Okay. I was watching. I think you were as well, Nadine. Last night I was watching Rachel's stream that she did Friday night stream, and and the subject of gospel music came up. And uh, unfortunately, most of my gospel music's in a. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Most okay. of my gospel stuff's all boxed up somewhere, but um, I did pull out quite a few Billy Preston albums. I mean, I always think of Billy Preston mm. as being, you know, a great, a great musician, but incredibly, you know, he, he just, he just had that gospel influence. Now this is his album, the most exciting organ, uh, organ ever, mid sixties. This is a Canadian Preston actually. This is, uh, I think I picked this in, in Canada you know, many years ago, but yeah, a great instrumental sort of soul jazz funk record. But he, he recorded, I mean, Arguably, he was more suited to working with other artists as like a sideman. Obviously, famously record, recorded with the Beatles, but I think throughout the 70s, he recorded with the Stones. Um, but as I say, there's a lot of gospel in his playing. So he, he played with the likes of Ray Charles. Sam Cooke is on the Nightbeat album. But um, yeah, these records, don't see them often shown in the VC. And yeah, I just love his playing. This is produced by George Harrison, obviously on Apple Records. But then into the 70s as well, he made some interesting funk records as well. A reasonable songwriter. You know, this, this album includes a song, um, You Are So Beautiful, which was a, a massive hit for Joe Cocker, of course. Mm. But um, originally a, a Billy Preston tune. Wow, well, I didn't know nice. that. I, I wow. think part of, the problem, the part of the problem with Billy Preston is that I don't think he, I mean, he had a good voice. He had a good backup voice. I don't think he was necessarily a, a lead singer. I okay. think that's part of the problem with him. But an incredible musician. So I've got a whole raft of, uh, of his stuff here. That's a, a UK pressing on the soul label. But he did make, obviously, we're talking about disco. He made some disco records in the late 70s, which, which are quite nice. You know, not necessarily essential, but interesting to listen to. But it would be those 60s records that I would go to if you want to, uh, if you want to check them out. Uh, he had a massive hit over here, a duet with uh, Sarita Wright, um, uh, with You Unborn Again, mm -hmm. which is, a, you know, a, a, it's a good song. And perhaps it's, it's, it's helped by the fact that Sarita's singing on it. But, um, yeah, I like these records. I say they're pretty, you know, they're, they're not necessarily essential records, but um, I think they sound great. But if you're going to play anything, Nadine, if you, if you can get a tune up, Billy's Bag from this record... It's a, a bit of a soul groover that you know that certainly do me, but uh, yeah, I've, I've always been a fan of that gospel sound, and hmm. there's a lot of gospel in his playing, even instrumentals. You know, just that that Hammond organ sounds. You know, he takes it to somewhere else. It's a yeah, brilliant records. Yeah, hold on, I I will play that for you. I will <laughs> play that. So let's see. You get any volume, Nadine? Yeah, I don't. I don't hear anything. 
Da haben wir noch, noch der nächste. Ja, okay. Hm. Now? Ja. Yeah. A little bit more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the um, what I'd say about those records as well, they're not expensive, you know, you can find, you can find these records, you know, whether it be, and I'll certainly look out for the 60s stuff, you can find stuff like that, and certainly um, this one as well, they're not expensive records, you know, so uh, look out for them, instrumental, if you like that sort of instrumental Hammond soul funk or Hammond jazz sound, you know, you'll, you'll dig that, so it's cool. What's not expensive for you, John? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't. I, I, I genuinely, I, I don't spend big money on any one item. Normally, the the couple that I've shown there are a little, a little bit north of that. But you know, I would say that what did I pay for this? Um, certainly, probably about fifteen pounds. Probably for that, I think about a tenner for the um, um, for, for the, the the record on Apple. I know I bought this this year. I paid five pounds for that. That's a nice minty copy of that. Um, and and these records, the these records from the, the late seventies, you know, you, you're getting those for less than five pounds. You're talking two or three pounds for those. You know, it's, it's cheap stuff. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Very so good. I'm also into my gospel phase uh, uh, at the moment. So. Um, if you are looking for a good gospel record, the East St. Louis Gospel Lads, Love is the Key. Uh, and I also got um, the Salem Travelers, which is still in the string since 1974. But I will open it up. Um, which leads me to another question. Maybe you, you guys can answer that to me. Did some of you uh, see the Mike Esposito video where he unveiled this uh, uh, collection of 100,000 euro uh, or dollar collection? No. So, uh, and most, most of that stuff, he had five Abraxas still sealed and really high end stuff sealed. How are you doing? I'm not judging. Everybody can do with their money what they want. But do you buy two versions of a record and keep one sealed and one is to you? No, or no. Is your Re it? Records are to be played. I don't, yeah, I don't buy anything I, to, uh, exactly. to keep it, you know. So yeah. everything I buy, I play. And if I don't play it, I sell it. You know, yeah. if, it, if I listen to a record and uh, it doesn't really hit the spot with me or, you know, mm. I might sit on it for a little while and then, and then try it again. If it doesn't work, I sell it. Yeah. Because mm. I just think, you know, there's there's too much music out there to be, uh, yeah, just be sitting on a, a sealed record. I find it crazy. Yeah, I agree. I don't do that neither. I mean, I know a lot of people are doing are, are doing that, now, buying two, three copies and, you know, keeping keeping them sealed. I, yeah, music is meant to be played. I mean, I... I it is. And also, record, collect, record collecting is a funny thing, though. I watch a lot of videos in the VC. We talk about particular pressings and such like. Mm -hmm. Now, if if I had you know a big pot of money and I, I could a, a, an infinite amount that I could go and spend on whatever, I could certainly build the perfect record collection just by getting on Discogs or wherever mm -hmm. and and buying the best copy of the of the perfect pressing for whatever the amount may be. But there's no fun in that. Yeah. So I, I mentioned the record there, you know, I was talking about Billy Preston. He played on a, um, a Sam Cooke album called Nightbeat. I've mm -hmm. been after a copy of Nightbeat for 20, 25 years. I could wow. quite easily get on Discogs and, find, and get a copy and buy it tomorrow for whatever the, the price is. Mm -hmm. But there's no fun in that. You know, I like getting out there and speaking to people. You know, this is my hobby. You know, this is yeah. I, every day I look for records. It's simple mm -hmm. as that. I look for records every day. I speak to people about buying records every day. 
And, you know, I don't just get on Discogs and, and pay the, the top price for the, for the record that I want. I get out and speak to people and, and that way you learn about new music. It's like today, you know, you know, both of you have played records that, that I've never heard of or never seen before. So next time I'm out looking, I'll be looking for those records. You know, that's the fun of it. You know, I'm not going to just get off this stream and look to look to buy the six records that you showed on Discogs. Mm. Because I, although although I may well do that for you know we, we one or two of them I don't know but part of, part of the, the the fun of record collecting is, is finding the right record at the right mm. price yeah so yeah. you know if you know Night Beat by by Sam Cooke is a great record I still don't own it I've you know I've been after it for since I've been collecting records since I was you know whatever a teenager or whatever but um you know one day I'll turn up at a record fair or something and I'll buy it and I'll be you know I'll be as happy as Larry. <laughs> when you find it, you know, that's that's the reward, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Is, is this the record you were always looking for, or what is your grail record you were always looking for and never found it? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, there's records that I'm looking for, but I don't think I don't know about a, a, one particular grail. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but there's always records in the back of my mind, or mm. you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, you, you like today speaking to people, speaking to you both. You mentioned records there, and you know I may well not go out and buy them all tomorrow. I won't do. I have, I, I, you know, whatever. But but when I'm out and looking, they'll be in the back of my mind. And when I see one of those records, I'll be thinking, oh yeah, I remember that. I like that tune. And if it's the right price, I'll buy it. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Hmm. If hmm. what about you? Do you have a Grail you're always looking for and still haven't found? When it comes to Grail, this term. <laughs> I'm, yeah. having problem, I'm having problem with this term because I, I I could never. Oh, this is my holy grail. No, that's not that's not a, a concept that you know. <laughs> I just of course that there are some you know records that are on on my want list or wish list or whatever. But holy grail, I not yet. I mean, I I can't I cannot think of any albums that I would consider like you know a holy grail. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think that the, the thing with Holy Grails is so once you got it, at least I think a few days later, you have another you want. You're always kind of on the hunt, you know, yeah. and uh, I have a record I can only recommend that I can't recommend it enough is. And uh, I think I also mentioned in the last stream is Barbara Harwood on mm -hmm. the rise. Yeah, yeah, I would, you know, that this is my Holy Grail. Getting an original pressing of this would be my Holy Grail, but only it, some collectors from the United States got in touch with me and said, "Good luck." Only five hundred. <laughs> yeah, you, you know my excitement when I got the mail after looking for it for I don't know how long I was looking for this record. My excitement when somebody Barbara Howard OG pressing in in the subject line, and I was like, "Oh my God, it's happening!" And he said, "Good luck." Whoa. Only five hundred were made. <laughs> Private pressing. And less than I think forty or something, he told me, are known to be in existence anymore. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was you know that really did not make my day. But um, th this is one of those records I would love to have an, as an OG pressing because um, this is the Vinyl Me Please reissue. Yeah. And the thing is, the record is so good, but I also love the backstory behind it. It's, it's kind of love story uh, behind this record, a real love story. And um, it's, it's uh, also a beautiful um, white, mm -hmm. pink. Nice, isn't it? Vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And um, they did a pretty good job on it, but this one is a needle drop. They couldn't find the original tapes. They were long gone, so they made a needle drop on it. So I would love to hear how um, how they, they got that, that record. And that would be, that would be quite something. Mm. But, but sometimes but, it's finding things that you don't know already, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so today I, I had a day to myself. So I've gone into 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 Birmingham where I live, and there's a shop there which I, I made a, a video about this uh, a few months ago. There was a a large drop of soul and funk records, and a lot of it's just very standard, you know, just normal fodder, you know, stuff that you see a lot. But you're literally t talking, I don't know, two to three thousand records. Now today I had a bit of time to myself, so it took me two and a half hours to go through every record there. Wow. So. You know, which, which you do, you know, you think so. I mean, I've been there a few times and just looked at through part of it, but because I had a day to myself, so it took me two and a half hours just to, 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 to flip through everything there. And on the back of that, you know, I found a few things. 
which I didn't necessarily know about when I went in, but you know, there's a deck there. I could listen to them. I could find out a little bit about them. So one of which is this record here by a band called Red Hot. I've never, never heard of this before. Um, you may know the band Manchild. They made a couple of LPs in the 70s, mid 70s. Well, this is what they became in the early 80s. And this is a, um, an early 80s sort of boogie soul record. And I, I played it just before coming on the stream today. You know, it's great. Absolutely fantastic. Now, this time yesterday, I didn't know anything about this record. But just by having spent all that time, and I'm lucky, I had a couple of hours, you know, to kill, whatever. I was able to go through, uh, you know, a load of dusty old records on my hands and knees. And, uh, yeah, I've had, I've had an absolutely brilliant day. You know, I've only found a handful of records, but that's a brilliant record. It's in great, it's in Wait, great I'm, I forgot to well. make you yeah. Sorry, Once I forgot to make you so Red what Hot. year was that recorded? 82. 82, 82. Years. Yeah. So it's it's after disco, so it's more into a pop or a... It's, it's, it's boogie. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's soul boogie. You know, you'd, uh, it, it's not disco. It's, um, it's soul boogie. But yeah, very nice. It's a really good record. Most of it's upbeat as well. Perhaps, perhaps one or two ballads, but, you know, six of the eight tracks are definitely upbeat. Yeah, so proper dancers. Cool. Awesome. I need to check that out. Yeah, give it a go. It's good. Um, I need, oh, well, I, you know, in November, uh, to tell a story, a friend of mine lives in Las Vegas and um, I'm visiting him and I, I thought, oh, wow, why not ordering some records from the United States and ship it to him mm -hmm. so I can pick it up while I'm there in November. Mm. So, and um, I'll be traveling soon and I thought um, I might ask about a picture of the stuff I already got there and tell you what I lost control. And he <laughs> said to me, what everything you've got here fits in a suitcase. Don't worry. And I said, okay, where are my clothes? You know, I totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> you I don't totally need clothes when you can get records. <laughs> it was like, you know, I, I've had a, a tremendous stress for weeks at work. And so I thought I treat myself with buying some records. And I always say, no, you need to stop now. You know, it's it's just like it's horrible. Ah, oh, you'll stop later. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop it. I just can't stop it. All right. Um, I will check out Red Hot. Mm. Good. So, so you guys, well, as, as having... I say, I didn't know anything about it until this morning. So there we go. We're we're all learning. <laughs> yeah, we're all learning. So some of you guys are having some 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 questions. Uh, what's Norman saying, Mazzy? When you travel like that. You know what my idea was, Massey, packing a little suitcase in my big suitcase so I don't need to buy a suitcase. <laughs> so once again, I'm a woman, I need to cut off clothes, which is, you know, when you go for a week, you pack for three weeks. Mm. That's difficult, you know. And that's not just a cliche. I can tell you from my perspective, it's true because it could be cold, it could be hot, it could be rainy. You want to be prepared. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Cool. Good. This has been fun. This is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, we, we picked <laughs> up the... nice records. Yeah. 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 You can always throw the clothes away. That's the other thing, you know. You, yeah, you, I thought so too. You can always buy more clothes at home. No, well, you know what my idea was? I, I'm just wearing something and I always wash it every day. <laughs> Wear the yeah. same clothes every day. Or, yeah, when you travel, or, or when you travel home, you just put all of your clothes on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like four, you know, jackets and, and, and everything, yeah. you know. So, but then I thought, okay, then I need two seats in a plane. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's always cold. I need some space. Sorry. You know, I, I, know somebody, I know somebody who did that and they uh, they put all their clothes on to go through, to, on the plane and they passed out in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty grim. Yeah. If one 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 of uh, we we will wrap it up. If if uh, but if some people of you are having some some questions, some suggestions, we try to to pick them up. How is the the vinyl situation? Let's call it that way. And and Canada price wise, so it's still able it's, to buy cheap it's, records. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, the prices are ridiculous. I mean, a regular album, a regular pressing, not a limited, not a colored, a basic regular pressing nowadays goes for at least $40, mm -hmm. at least when it comes to no new records, at mm -hmm. least. But 
this is for like maybe pop or classic rock, but when it comes to R and B and soul, you can go like from fifty dollars. Mm. I mean, that's the that's the base that that's a regular price now. Fifty dollars. Wow. It's it's ridiculous. It is um yeah. It's not wow. funny. I mean, I just bought the last record I bought new was the um was the uh uh george michael's older yeah yeah and i paid forty dollars for it 40 40 canadian dollars wow is what it is it's uh yeah it's it's not fun it's not fun no that's yeah. a good record as well yeah it's, it's a, really a nice. beautiful record isn't it yeah beautiful record yeah did do you have yeah. his other records as well eve did you have uh, listen to that prejudice I have no, I don't have that yet on, on vinyl. I don't on vinyl. Yeah. I don't. Oh, he has such a good voice. My favorite non soul disco record. Oh man, that's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, <laughs> that's, a tough, isn't it? <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> Put you uh, on your spot. That's a tough question. I mean, I, I, I do like uh, uh, prog rock a lot. I'm a fan of progressive rock, and uh, there's, I can show you, I'll try to show you, oh, where is it? Uh, uh, I'm trying to find it. So in the meantime, um, Two record recommend two record stores in Vegas is uh, what I can recommend is Vegas Vinyl, and there's another one which is called Trax Wax. But be aware when you go into Trax Wax, that's a very interesting store. If you go there, and they have like everything. But if you go there and you pick up a record, there are no price tags on it. So you get at the counter and he checks at Discogs what the price is, and then he decides at that moment uh, how much he wants you to charge for that record. I hate so, that. I absolutely yeah, hate that. I, because it's so mm -hmm. unrealistic. There was one record signed by an artist which sold for 800, mint for 800 euro. And the, so the, the medium price or something now got to yeah, around, yeah. I don't know, 600 or something. And the next one, which was VG++, was now offered, which is, let it be an 80 euro record, is now 500 because the other yeah. one sold. That's insane. It's just, oh, that's right, yeah. And what I, I hate about that type of shop is that, you know, all he's done is stick a load of records in the shop and do no work on it. And you're the one that they're doing the work with the knowledge. You're the one who's, you know, going through however many hundred records and picking out yeah. what you knows, you know, the good stuff. He hasn't done that. And um, and then you then you, you, you say you get the $500 price tag, whatever, you know, that's out of order. That is. It's lazy, lazy on the shop owner's part. Yeah, yeah, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, regarding the question, I am a fan of progressive rock music. And there is a band from Montreal from the 70s. And it, the band, it's called Armonium. This is the name of the band, Armonium. And this is their second album. It's titled like the fifth season. It is just a, an amazing, one of the most, in my opinion, most beautiful progressive rock album albums uh, ever made in my opinion they are french canadian so yeah they sing in french but i mean i always thought that you know uh, language language wasn't a barrier when it comes to music but yeah they're great 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 musician amazing uh, and lyricist and this is one of my favorite uh, uh progressive rock albums so yeah Cool. But I mean, the list can go on and on. I mean, I, I like all kinds of music. Of course, my my, my favorite genre is soul R and B, but I, I like all kinds of music. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard progressive soul? Progressive I soul. Um, never heard of that. Progressive soul. So the vinyl record player, maybe you can point that out a little bit. What the, heard. It's. Called this is this is a title. It's in French. Sorry. Le Cinq Saison. Le Cinq Saison, yeah. But in English, um, it's like the fifth, um, the fifth season. But it's the Cinq Saison. Yeah, it's just beautiful. So 
so progressive. So I never heard of that. So the vinyl record, record. I never heard of that. As, me neither. Progressive soul. So Mazzy, Billy, Bill Paul had one sort of. Is that meant with? Yeah. Okay. So that's um, War of the Gods. War of the Gods had that um, slightly more. It was on on Philly International. Um, it, it's, it's, it's almost. It looks like a prog rock cover that the album the album artwork does. But it's just it's it's longer, more drawn out um, soul songs basically. Yeah, I suppose you could call it progressive soul, but it's uh, that, I think that's what Maz is uh, referring to there. It's a great record, you know. If, if you're looking for a Billy Paul, Paul album, then uh, War of the Gods is uh, is one to look out for. Okay, I only know the 360 degree. That's of... a good record. That's one we made Mrs. Jones on, of course, isn't it? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a black enough for you. That's brilliant songs. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, great. A unique voice, Billy Paul, as well. As soon as you hear yeah. one of his records, you know it's Billy Paul. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Many. Uh, so I saw some critics uh, uh, writing in the internet that he wasn't having the best voice, but the musicians behind him were, were great. But I must say that uh, me and Mrs. Jones, I have some 45 of him up there. Um, I think mm. he's just great. I love him. Yeah, I, I don't think, see, for me, it's not about having the perfect voice. I mean, certainly, I mean, there are people that have had a perfect voice. Like Aretha Franklin, I mean, it doesn't get any better than Aretha. But, um, but you know, sometimes it's the voices that ha that aren't so perfect, which are the most interesting, you know. So, yeah. um, and Billy Paul is a, is a, a really good example of that. You know, he, I don't necessarily think he had the strongest voice, but he had a distinctive voice. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he, you know there are many... There are many soul singers that you, you know you can interchange you're interchangeable you know you you could confuse them for each other but you know you'd never confuse billy paul for anybody else he uh you you know his, his music as soon as you hear it aretha had a few sisters and i think caroline franklin um yeah. i must say that aretha of course she's the queen but caroline franklin she had out some great great records and she sounds just phenomenal she does yeah yeah and she's a, a chance, great songwriter as well she, yeah, she wrote she songs to her sister yeah yeah and she you know that the, also the thing is if your sister is aretha franklin and you, you kind of get compared or, or stuff with this it was so difficult for her so she yeah. she pretty much ended up being the backing singer for her sister which is not bad being a backing singer for aretha franklin you know mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah. she had some great records out there. So if you have a chance, get them. They're just yeah. cool. great. So mom knows treasures. Yeah, yeah. me and me chills every time. All right, guys. So you're having some more some more questions for us, some stuff we can work around with, which we sometimes don't know, but we're <laughs> doing our best. Just let us know. I got an, uh, a mail if we will do uh, another stream. I think we will be doing another stream. Yeah, yeah I've really enjoyed yes, this. It's, it be, yes. it's been nice to be here since, since from yeah. the start as well. It's been yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah, that was that was awesome. You know, I, I sent you a few uh, a message that you should be right on time. I've never um, had so many messages as I've had from Nadine this week. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, here somebody uh, points out Irma Ar Franklin. She has a tremendously great uh, version of yeah. Light My Fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, by the time I get to Phoenix, um, um, uh, that, that album was released in 1969. It was called uh, Soul Sister, I think, by Irma Franklin. And uh, there's also a great version of Once in My Life. And the thing is, um, she's she had quite some stuff as a light my fire light my fire and um for once in my life was also recorded by barbara haywood so sometimes i compare them so uh yeah that was a great record mm. expensive great record hold on i'm coming mm. i love that record all right uh favorite 50s to 60s artists let me know um my god 60s artists I do like um, Etta James. Oh my God, Etta James! Yeah, yeah. Etta James. Uh, yeah, she had a voice. Yeah. Oh my, I love Etta James. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Trying to find it. Uh, 
Wasn't she the one uh, like I always have to think of the uh, Coca Cola commercial? I don't want you to be my lover. Is that was that who was that? Was that who? I have this one here, which is a live album from the Montreux Jazz Festival. Oh my God! Yeah, there's guys. There's footage of that on YouTube yes. when things are. I'd rather be blind. Oh, she's she's oh. amazing. She's amazing. What a I've never seen that. I have to check that out. That's brilliant. A powerhouse. Oh my God powerhouse lady i i love i love her i love her style oh, i love her and she was as well she was you know in the same era uh, a bit as uh, you know uh, um aretha and whatnot and we tend to forget her a bit but i mean she was something else Eddie james she was something else what a voice and this mm -hmm. this live I, i'm not a huge fan of live live albums but i just i just love this one here from the Montreux Jazz Festival, it, it's it's beautiful, beautiful. Came that out years later, or came that out? Uh, I think she was there in the she was there in the mid seventies, I think. But she was yeah, since the the sixties as well. I do believe she she has she has released some stuff in the sixties as well. Like I have this one here. You see, from nineteen fifty five to nineteen sixty one, she was wow. pretty young. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that! Oh, look, at look at that cover art. Yeah. Wow. Very I nice. That. I just love it, James. I, I yeah, I love mm -hmm. it, James. Yeah. Great, great, great uh, vocalist. Great vocalist. So, do you have some fifties or some fifty stars? Uh, I don't have. Yeah. A lot. So, if I was going to pick somebody from the fifties, Little Richard. Little Richards from the fifties into the sixties. I mean, what a voice! I mean, we take we take Little Richard for granted, you know. He's he's, but he must have sounded incredible when he started making when when those records came out in the fifties. I've got I've got a jukebox here, and when my, my little boy was a was a, a toddler, I could play. He used to play the jukebox, press the buttons and stuff, you know. And and you know, he listened to anything. But the one song that you know I couldn't play on the jukebox was "Bama Lama Bama Lou" by by Little Richard, because he screams at the start of the song, and it used to scare <laughs> William to death. You know, he used to, you know. So um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Little Richard, you know, he, you know he's ahead of his time. Yeah, ahead of his time, pioneer. It, it was yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So are we done? Is uh, I think everybody's <laughs> disappearing, aren't they? So no, mm. not yet. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Sixty-six people watching. Um, I like the platters. From the yeah, very nice. Uh, um, I was trying to get a, a 78 uh, version of Only You. Um, yeah. That's uh, quite, you know, quite difficult, quite expensive. So I uh, let that mm. uh, let that go. And um, it's 60s. There are so many people. I like Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, mm. I like Sarah Vaughan, um, yeah. who are more like into jazz. I saw a clip yeah. of Sarah Vaughan at the beginning of the 60s when she was singing Misty. And I was like, oh, my God, she's phenomenal. And at the end, she was in Sweden singing that. And at the end of the clip, she said, I'm sorry, my voice is not that strong. I have the flu. And I thought, how do you sound when you're not having the flu? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so, so many artists. And yeah. you know, it's, it's very difficult to point out. And it's very important yeah. also to yeah. recognize the people who didn't get the recognition back then. Yeah. Nina Simone as well. She started in the city. Oh, my God. Love her mm -hmm. as well. Love that. My way. Did you hear her version of My Way? I love that version of My Way. I mean, she. I've not heard that, no. No, I haven't heard that as well. Let's, let's she, come on. Let's, let's, let's the last My Way, how, how, how's the best way to finish? Uh, Nina Simone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good closing song, isn't it? It's my a way. perfect one. I always think of Elvis. So now I know what Rachel is always going through when she's sharing all this uh, the stuff where that's, you know, kind of clicking, cl kind of, you know, doing this, doing that, forget to mute, you. don't mute yourself to click that button, share that thing and do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nina Simone. The end is near, and so I got to face the final curtain. Friends, I'll say it clear and state my case. Of which I'm certain, I've lived a life that's full of 
Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, I think from a 1970 album, and that's one of the greatest songs from that uh, from that she, album. She did some amazing covers as well in the Simone. Yeah. Yeah, and and what I think is she was so troubled in her life, and the last yeah. years of her life, she said, you know, the thing is, I made some songs. She was very much into the uh, uh, movement, yeah, the uh, right movement, and all of that, and she sang many songs about that. And she, that was in the 80s when they interviewed her and she had a, 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 the bipolar disorder or something. And uh, sh she said, you know, the thing is today, nobody remembers me because I made songs that had no meaning today. It's not having, I'm, I'm not recognized. And, and she was a brilliant musician. And, um, you know, that's that's so sad. So I always think it's very important to, to point her out as well. She was a real artist in my opinion. Yeah. That's what a real artist is about. I mean, you have to, you know, you have to represent your era. You have to, you know, you have to uh, 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 be like a, a, a conscious, uh, 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 even in your music. And that's what I, I that's what I, I love about I loved about her, her, her work. She wasn't afraid to, you know, to express how she felt in the, uh, in your in your music. She, yeah, she was always honest in everything yeah. she did. She was always yeah. uh, honest, and yeah. that's uh, uh, right. Kill tube. It's from Here Comes the Sun. It's, I think 1970, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So, um, all right. So I would say we round up to two hours. Um, <laughs> I must admit, I can feel the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sign. That's good. Uh, it's, you know, every time, I'm, like I said, I'm always so nervous, so I drink something to calm down my nerves, and it, it ends up me being a little drunk at the end of it, always. I'm just a little drunk. Just I'm, I'm uh, not you, driving. You do really well, Nadine. You know, <laughs> dealing with all the sound clips and different things, reading the comments, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Thank so, you so really much. good. So we will let you know, all, all guys know when we will be back. Um, it would be great in, uh, if we do in December a, a kind of special of the best records we found in uh, 2022. I think cool. that would be that would be uh, uh, cool. And um, so uh, I think our next stream will be in November somehow. Mm -hmm. We'll figure out the dates. And once again, I can only appreciate that everybody's taking the time, watching uh, watching what we what we have to say. Yeah, thank and, you guys. Um, Thanks for watching, guys. It's been really and, good. Uh, Thank you. So I would say, uh, yeah, have a great Saturday. Whatever another stream is coming up. I heard yesterday was a streaming day at, you know, Madhouse stream. Everybody was kind of streaming. I very much enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, thanks, everybody. And uh, we see each other next time. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>